Now it is not often that you will hear me describe a watercolor painting as being both therapeutic and beautiful, but this watercolor whale painting is just that. I created the first one just kind of as a way to practice a few ideas. I had twins, so I was making it for their nursery, um, but I loved the process so much and I knew you guys would love it too, so I knew I had to record it for the second piece, uh, the second half of this kind of yin yang whale painting. Now it is a wet to wet piece, so you can see right now I am wetting this fin. I'm gonna just work on this section and we're gonna repeat the process throughout this um, entire whale. So I'm just applying the water. You can see that it is damp. It's definitely wet, but it's not dripping. There aren't like puddles sitting there as I lift it up. It's not gonna drip down the page, um, but it is wet so that I'm able to get both the hard edges on the edge of the fin, but also some soft blending as it goes inside. Now we're only gonna be using two colors for this entire piece. I'm gonna start with indigo. I'm just using the Blick Indico brand. I've found, I love that. It's worked really well for me. I'm sure there are better brands that you know make a beautiful indigo, but that works for me and it was really affordable. I'm going to try to allow the blooms to kind of just bleed into the body of the whale and the fin of the whale very organically, but I'm also going to you know, reserve my right as the artist to kind of lead and guide it to make sure that it's filling in the way that I want it to and that I'm getting enough emphasis. Now here, as you can see that I'm pushing the pen, the pencil, the paintbrush in much harder. I'm picking up paint as I'm doing that. And so I'm making sure that it's not getting too saturated where I want there to be a little bit more of a highlight. And then I'll just continue to kind of slowly add a little bit of paint in there. It is still wet. I am going in now with some burnt sienna and that is the second color that we're gonna be using. So indigo and burnt sienna together, they're a great combo. They complement each other well, but then they blend well together. Um, I really just love this duo for this piece. And so there's not really a rhyme or reason to how I'm adding the burnt sienna in there. Um, I'm just kind of, putting it where I feel like it needs to be. If I haven't put it in a while, I'm gonna add it in there. I am also including it in areas that I feel like I want to highlight. So if you look on the whale that I've already completed, you can see um, on the tail fin, there's like just this certain angle that I wanna capture. And so I'm adding the burnt sienna there really just to emphasize that area to draw a little bit more attention there because of the contrast. Um, but I think that it helps it to become a little bit more interesting, not only because it's not just another version of blue or version of gray. Um, the two mixed together when they're their most saturated do make a, just a pretty neutral color as in, I mean, really you could make a very easy black or a gray with the two. Um, but I like that when they're mixed together but not totally together, um, they just seem to dance. So I did the other fin doing the same technique and you'll see now I'm going to do the tail fin in the same way. Um, and just going in sections will help me to control it a little bit more. And it helps me when I'm working in a looser style like this to not lose the overall shape of the whale. So you see I've just done that back section of this fin, the back half. I know that I want that to be a little bit darker just so that it kind of looks like it's a little bit more in shadow. Um, and then I'm just, going to continue to work and guide the paint to where I want it to be. Once I have my indigo in place, I'll go with my raw sienna, or my burnt sienna. I'm going to keep saying raw sienna, but it is definitely burnt sienna that I'm putting in here. So I continue to just kind of keep moving things around, working my way up the body. Again, I'm just going to kind of keep doing this technique. It's wet on wet, it's very organic, and I'm able to just really kind of relax while I'm doing this and add paint where I want it to go. There's not really a wrong answer throughout this process. Uh, I'm just continuing to build it up and if I think it needs some more, then I add a little bit more um, or I can pick it up as you saw with the fin earlier or right there. And then to define that space a little bit more, just kind of where the tail fin creates that V shape, I'm just adding a little bit of that burnt sienna, just tapping in as I want it to be darker. I'm picking up paint if I need it to be a little bit lighter. And I want that transition from kind of the main body of the tail to the fin of the tail 
to be a little bit darker. It just kind of helps to emphasize that almost like an ankle strip. It'll help to define it for my viewer, which that is the biggest thing when you're working with looser styles like this is you want to make sure that the viewer knows exactly what's going on. And so you have to kind of keep stepping back, whether you're leaning back from your painting or sometimes I will, if I'm working on a client piece or if I'm struggling with something, I'll set it up against the wall and then I'll step back and turn around and look at it and see if that helps to clarify some things. Now right there I just used a little bit of an eraser just to make sure that I don't get any pencil marks on you know coming through the paint. Um, I have it there to kind of help me but if it's too dark it will definitely show through the paint and cause some problems there. Now just because I'm working in a looser style doesn't mean I can't go back through and deepen some things, maybe correct some mistakes that I've made. Um, I do. I used to think that I would have to do everything in one pass if I was working in a loose style and it all just had to be super organic and I had to be an amazing artist. Um, you don't have to do that. You don't have to be superwoman where you're just throwing everything in and it automatically looks beautiful. Painting in general, you need to go through several passes and especially when you're working with something so opaque as watercolor. Okay, so I'm going to start with the nose here, and you'll see how I'm going to work through the body. Um, the nice thing about these whales, their humpback whales, is that the belly is a lighter shade than kind of the back of the whale. And so I was able to keep those two separate a little bit and help define the space even more. It also took some of the pressure off with having to paint too quickly. <laughs> Um, so I do have that section nice and wet where I want it to be. I'm making sure that nothing is drying too quickly. But I, again, I don't want the paper where I'm working to be soaked. Um, otherwise, the paint will dry, won't dry the way I want it to, and it will just kind of start to get muddy. The two colors that I'm using will kind of blend together more than I'd like them to, um, and I won't have as much control. My paper will buckle. It'll just be a mess. So I am going to build up this color quite a bit. You'll see that I keep going back, adding more indigo, adding more indigo, adding more indigo, um, because I do want the back to be nice and dark, to be really well defined, um, just like on the other wheel. I'm just continuing to add ink and I'm really going through there's not a lot of water on my brush I'm just going I'm grabbing some pigment maybe a little bit of water to make sure that it continues to travel through the water I have on the paper um, but not a lot I don't want to add it really any more water to my paper because um, that so that's when you get kind of the blooms that look unnatural and look more like you've made a mistake is if you're adding water to something that's already wet um, you you have to do that very carefully. And then the next section, thankfully this fin kind of separates these two sections and so I'm able to just wet the next section and move on without having to worry about any harsh lines. On the belly we will have to work on that a little bit more but because it's lighter it won't be as much of a problem. So same thing, we're just adding some pigment in there, making sure that the transitions are exactly the way I want them to be. I do still want there to be some definition between the back and the belly here, um, but it's going to be softer than it was at like the nose and the mouth. Now here you can see I'm sweeping the brush up, just again trying to keep everything at an even level of dampness or wetness and so that everything blends really well. I'm going to kind of add a little bit of a line, nothing too, too heavy. Um, I do want it to continue to bleed in towards the back, um, but I want it to still define the section between the belly of the whale and the back of the whale, just because there is that color transition. In order to define the area between the fin a little bit more, I added a little bit of that burnt sienna, um, just to add that little bit of color. going through and adding a little bit more back here. So it didn't show up as quite as um, much as I wanted it to. 
And the nice thing about if you are working with watercolor, you're learning about it, once you learn how to do a glaze, which is where you're just adding a little bit of color on top, it's not a lot of water, it's not a lot of pigment, that will help you as you're working with looser styles to kind of edit things, whether it's you accidentally left out a, more of the color than you wanted to, a little glaze will add it in without messing up what's underneath. Here I'm going in, I'm adding more of that indigo. It did not dry as dark as I wanted it to. And so I'm just gonna go in and add some more of that pigment. I'm also making sure it's nice and dark under that fin area so that it acts kind of as a shadow, helps the fin to pop up visually. Um, so you can tell that it is above the body of the whale. All right, now it's time to work on the belly. So this part I found really stressful. You do have to work pretty quickly to kind of cheat the system. I'm working with dirty water. Um, so I have a little bit of that indigo in my water here and I'm just adding it on and that will help to make the whole process a little bit faster um, because I don't have to kind of tap through some of that color. I'm being very careful around the transition area from the belly to the back because I don't want um, to mess with that line that I already have. Now I'm adding the lines that you can see on the belly of my first whale. Um, I want them to be soft, but there. So that's why I'm working in a larger section because I want the paper to be damp so that it's a soft line. It kind of makes a more fuzzy line rather than a sharp line. Um, but I don't want it to bleed too much so that it almost disappears. So working very quickly. You can see kind of the first lines that I had at the mouth or the snout of the whale. Can you even say snout on a whale? <laughs> the nose of the whale? <laughs> that kind of disappeared and that's okay. I'll be able to go through and define those a little bit further. And on some of these lines, I'm adding a little bit of the raw sienna. Again, I'm just, when you are doing this, just let it kind of flow. And if you're feeling like, hey, I feel like dipping my brush in some raw sienna, I said it again, some burnt sienna, go ahead dip it in the burnt sienna and pull it out, see how it goes. If it looks like it's too much, okay, take a break for a while um, and just kind of find that balance. So there isn't kind of a rhyme or reason. You don't wanna to be too um, mechanical with it or else it, you know, it looks more like a pattern. And what I'm trying to go for is just something very soothing, a very organic, a nice color play. Now that I'm done with that top section, I'm going to overlap the water from the first section to the back section. And this is how I'm going to be able to kind of create a nice smooth transition from the front to the back. So I'm kind of following, I'm using the fact that there are lines on the belly to my advantage and I'm kind of overlapping it that way. Slowly pulling in the colors and kind of emphasizing different areas that I want to emphasize. Um, that way there won't be Kind of that harsh water line when I am overlapping the colors. Added a nice big stripe of the burnt sienna there and I really love how that helped to define it without it being another stripe of like the indigo or anything that got too dark but having that color differentiation um, will help to define the space. You can see I'm starting to add kind of some of those stripes. Want them to be nice and light and subtle. and helping to define the space even more. So now this stripe will get nice and soft on the belly and kind of just fade off as it gets closer to the tail. So as I'm adding the stripes, it is mostly water on, well, Pigment to water, it is more water than pigment, but it's not a lot of water. There is, it's a mostly dry brush. There's a little bit of pigment on there and there's a little bit of water on there just so that it's able to spread through um, to create kind of that very soft stripe. Now this on the edge, there's a little bit more pigment. Again, not a ton of water because it's already wet. I'm able to kind of tap that pigment in, um, but it's more so there's a little bit more pigment on there than when I'm doing the stripes themselves. 
but adding a little bit darker in the back will help kind of define the space, help it to look a little, this whale to look a little bit more round. And now that I have the base of the body the way that I want it to be, I'm going to start adding in those pops of the burnt sienna. Um, I didn't add as much as I did on the first whale, and I do want them to look like they go together. So I'm going to just kind of help define areas that I really want to pop, like kind of this jawbone that is on the whale. Um, I really want that shape to be shown off, um, as well as this transition to the fin. And so I'm just going to kind of go through, lightly add a wash of the burnt sienna in there um, to really help define the space and just give him that, I don't know, that I don't even know how to describe the color play that I love seeing in here, but um, I feel like it kind of has this kind of rusty, this aged look to it um, that just plays off this animal so well. And I am, I don't know if you noticed, but I did wet kind of that area first, just kind of a clean wash of water. Not a lot, but then I'm dipping in the burnt sienna. Last but not least, I did decide to um, kind of add a little bit more to the back of the whale. And then I decided to go in with some freckles. Now this is just with a little bit of the indigo on my brush. And, and again, it's like a damp well, I'd say it's a little bit more than damp because I am actually putting down water, but not a ton of pigment. And I'm just tapping it in there. And again, that's kind of to help with this almost like a rusty old bucket you know, vibe that I'm going for where it's this aged semen where he is, you know, like he's got some freckles, he has some imperfections, but that's part of the beauty and that's part of why we love it so much. So I'm adding those in on here, just kind of testing it out to see if I like it. Um, and spoiler alert, I ended up loving it and adding it to the second one as well. Um, so I'm adding them in. These are mostly an indigo. I think I did add a couple of the burnt sienna ones, but I really just wanted to play with the indigo. The great thing about it is that if you don't like it, you just kind of pick them up with your brush and you're good to go. So adding these mostly in the back of this whale and then on the lower one I added it mostly in kind of the belly making sure that they're in the fin and our tail fins and I really feel like that made the piece in a second I'm going to zoom in and I hope that you will love the result as much as I did I'm just going in it's just very gentle if you're going for freckles go less is more you can always add more pigment and more water on top and here is the finished piece I love the harmony and the contrast between um, just kind of the texture and the loose style of this painting where it's just kind of like that rough semen like we were talking about before but just with the organic movement of this beautiful animal. Um, I hope that you found this tutorial helpful and I hope that it helps you on your watercolor journey. Until next time, happy painting!